Hi, I'm Greg Hunter. Welcome to USAWatchdog.com. With us once again, the editor of the Hat Trick Letter, which can be found on GoldenJackass.com. I'm talking about Dr. Jim Willie. Dr. Jim Willie coming to us from uh, Central America. Thanks for joining us today on USA Watchdog. Uh, good to be back. It's been a month, and you know, every single month, another bunch of events happen, and there, there's just nothing stands still. This, this, it's like a, a bunch of trees falling down. You can turn your head for a couple of hours, and yeah, they're going to be falling more when you get back to them. Well, you said in the in the pre-interview just off camera that uh, the end of this year will look nothing like the beginning of this year. 2014 is a pivotal year. Explain that. Well, we, we spent a lot of years trying to hold this thing together. And in my opinion, the whole system broke in 2007 and 8, the, the subprime mortgages. And I was saying before that, gosh, you know, we got the entire U.S. economy depending on the housing bubble and the, the mortgage finance bubble. And when that breaks, the system's going to break. Well, it broke with Lehman. That was a kill job. That was a rescue of Goldman Sachs with, with no reference to that. But uh, in the following couple of years, it continued to break. And what did we do? We went to 0%, made it pretty clear it's forever. What else did we do? We went to bond monetization, the QE. I love QE. It makes it sound like it's like CPR. No, it, it's death. It's hyper-monetary inflation, what uh, Nazi Germany did in the 1930s. It wrecked everything. No, so we got this. ZIRP, zero interest rate policy, and QE, it's all very sophisticated stuff. These are desperation measures to hold it together because the system is broken. And now we're getting to the point where QE and, and all the bond purchases is causing some major problems and it's breaking the entire economic structures while at the same time clowns like Prince Draghi in uh, the European Central Bank He's having his patch jobs declared as illegal. So, you know, it's all breaking, Greg. It's all breaking, and they're having a tremendous problem holding it together. And now the whole Eastern world is rebelling against the dollar. Well, let's talk about the what happened in Ukraine, because you sent me some, uh, some of your notes on what was going on. And you're talking about this Iran uh, which I brought up in my weekly news wrap up the Iran uh, Russia deal for 20 billion dollars and you know why would the world's largest oil producer Russia be wanting some of tra trading more oil getting more oil and that and I think it's to, you know uh, to basically flood the world or put more oil out there in non-dollar terms but you're saying that this deal between Iran and Russia would have never happened had it not been for the you know the US forcing this Crimean incident you know the Ukrainian incident during the Olympics and you know there was a coup and we were you know funding that coup in uh, in uh, Ukraine but you're saying that this deal 20 billion in trade 500,000 barrels of oil a day in this deal for 20 billion is what the deal is between Russia and Iran would have never happened had it not been for the push to destabilize Russia and Ukraine and the Crimean Peninsula it's just like stage two of the sanction backfire. The first one was the 2012 Iran sanctions, and what did that accomplish? Well, they worked with Turkey and India to create the workaround, which is the prototype, as I call it, for gold trade settlement. So India buys Iranian oil and uses Turkey as an intermediary to grab some gold and pay Iran with it. I mean, this is so basic. No, we would never have gotten... The, uh, the Russian deal with Iran, but this is really, you, you hit it correctly, I think, there's a second side. You said to flood the world with uh, oil that's not paid for in dollars. Exactly, and, and to establish uh, a pattern so that other countries can see, go ahead, make deals, buy oil, don't use the dollar. It, it's like, here's a boycott and a defiant step Follow our lead. It's it's a it's a model being created. So you know it's half a million barrels a day. And since when does Russia need their oil? This is a giant favor to Iran. Uh, they're they're going. To, this could be you know something a, a little bit different. It, it could be Iran basically saying, we really want a lot more of your missiles. 
we want some of your nuclear refinements, mm. centrifuge technology, and what do we have to offer but oil and gas? And, you know, you're just up to your ears in gas, so how about a little bit of oil? So they go ahead and do it. Can, can you imagine the Saudi Arabians importing oil? <laughs> That's like New York City and Manhattan importing arrogance. No, they already have plenty of it. Now, this is a backfire against the Russian sanctions. And notice in the press that there are denials that any Russian missiles are involved. No, the Russians have the Sunburn and the Onyx missile, which is a generation, not a year or two, a generation ahead of the Tomahawk cruise missile. They've also got a lot of savvy with nuclear plants, and I'm not talking about, you know, building nuclear bombs. I'm talking about building nuclear plants like Chernobyl, which Langley interfered with and jammed with hacking procedures and forced a meltdown. Chernobyl was caused by Langley. Wow, that's a big claim. Oh, gosh, that's that's old news. That's very old stuff. I've, I have about three or four... Uh, contacts talking about that like it's pretty damned obvious. And, uh, you know, they didn't need that at Fukushima. They just went straight to using a harp weapon and, uh, you know, causing an earthquake. But there's, there's no possible swift blockade with the banks for Russia. You know, here's just an unbelievably far-fetched, silly concept. Let, let me just ask you, have you ever known a 400-pound man? Uh, can, can you wrestle him to the ground? No. With Russia, you've got 12 time zones. Can you wrestle it to the ground and isolate it? No. And when you got handshakes with China, you get the two other big superpowers shaking hands, walking side by side, making head nods, agreeing on policy, and pretty soon I think we're going to see Russia saying, you want to pay in yuan for our oil and gas? Fine. Let's just get away from this dollar because it's got so many problems. Well, that's it's got a central bank that's printing money and, and also giving it to their own banker friends. Let's all avoid the dollar. What do you say we rally around the Chinese yuan? I think that's coming from Putin. And what about this uh, double uh, eagle, uh, you know, the Russians uh, version of their, of their SWIFT system? Uh, you know, which is, uh, you know, something to facilitate global, global trade. And you say this, this system, this double eagle system that will counter the SWIFT system is, uh, is going to debut sooner than people think. There are going to be a number of things that happen sooner than we think um, already. Okay, here's a funny sequence that happened. The U.S. government announced that they were going to do sanctions against several big Russian banks. So Wall Street stepped in and said, wait a minute, you can't do that. We're screwing with their ruble. We need to go in and hack through a couple of their banks. We need them. Why don't you just pick on one? So they decided on Russia Bank. Russia has major offices in Moscow and St. Petersburg. So Russia Bank comes back and says, all right, you're going to play games with us? We're going to go to exclusive ruble usage. We're not going to do any settlement in dollars or euros. All our transactions with European clients will be done in rubles, and they will have to scurry around to find the rubles. Well, guess what happens when all these European clients have to get rubles to pay for Russian gas and oil? The ruble strengthens. The ruble strengthens and it crushes the London and New York bankers that are interfering with financial warfare on the ruble. Now, what we got is a Eurasian axis that's starting to form. It's going to be Russia, China, and India, and later I think uh, Germany's going to play a key role. Iran and Saudi Arabia are going to play a very strange but important role. They're going to end their conflict, but the, the, the real piece de resistance here regarding the, the Russian double eagle project is they're going to be flooding their banks with gold reserves, gold bars, gold coins. And they're going to be relying on a, a, a region called Magadan, which is on the Pacific coast of Russia, 12 time zones away from, from Poland. 
you know, let's, let's try to surround this country. Yeah, from the Atlantic to the Pacific, let's surround this country. Um, they've got a gold project called Natalka, and Natalka is going to supply <clears throat> what they say a promise of endless supply of gold to the Russian Central Bank. Now, you, you've got the Russians that are, are selling energy, oil and gas. They've got vodka. They've, they've got technology. They are a leading nation in telecommunications. The KGB is no slouch. They can give NSA a run for their money. And notice that the, uh, the Russians were doing quite a creditable job in Kiev intercepting some phone communications to let it be known that the Americans were involved on the rooftop sniper killing police. Also with Victoria Newland saying, you know, F the, the, the EU. And, uh, yeah. and Newland out public statements saying that they gave, uh, in the last several years they gave $5 billion to Ukraine. Why? I mean, what are we doing that for? I mean, we're expediting, we're expediting this, this dollar, this non-dollar trade, are, are we not? I mean, a lot of people say, and I just want to bring this up, because a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, I hear these, these, these pundits uh, talking about, oh, it'll be 10, 20 years before the world can do without the dollar. And I say, I, I don't know. It doesn't look like that's, that's, that the rest of the world is going to allow us to print another, you know, 20 trillion, 30 trillion dollars before they step in and say, okay, we're taking the punch bowl away. I mean, we're done. We're leaving the party. Uh, what do you say? Is this going to take a 10 or 20 years before that the world, you know, gets sheds the dollar in, in global trade? I think we've gone 10 years longer than its ordinary lifetime should have been, and now we're on the death throes. To people like that, I would say, are you aware that J.P. Morgan sold its headquarters to China? Are you aware that, that Morgan Stanley sold their Platts energy office desk, trading desk? to Rosneft of Russia? Where have you been? You're not even noticing the tectonic shifts that are going to result in some profound effects. Have you noticed that Iran has worked with, uh, with Turkey and, and India to get a workaround of the sanctions that have been a complete failure? Where have you people been? Now, what's coming next is a bold display at the Moscow Bank headquarters of Rossiya Bank. It's going to be a big gold R because they're coming up with a gold-backed ruble. They're tired of this crap. And if the U.S. wants to push them and push them and poke sticks in, in the Russian bear's face, the Russians are going to turn around and say, all right, we hear you. We only accept rubles. We understand. You want to isolate us? Fine. We'll remain isolated and not use the dollar. Huh. But the, the backfire is the Eastern Hemisphere has a critical mass, and this is something you just don't hear in the Western press. Critical mass means cannot be isolated because it might even be the majority of global trade. How do you isolate the majority of global trade and tell them, we're not going to let you do SWIFT-based dollar transfers? Okay, oh, fine. Fine, they're, they're going to come up with Project Double Evil, double, double, double Eagle, not evil, um, and, and challenge the swift. This is not going to be easy for Russia. They are not sophisticated in banking operations and functions. This is like an a Anglo-American, French and German monopoly for a century. This goes way back. The U.S. and the British are experts at finance. But they're also experts at corruption in finance, like with bank derivatives and with forex rigged markets and LIBOR rigged markets. So, you know, the, the ITAR TAS, which is like their UPI, has, has come out and, and trumpeted the news of the golden ruble and its launch. It's not going to be a couple of years away. It's going to be a few months away. Oh. And there's, there's another bank, a big bank. They don't have 30 big banks like the U.S. They have five or seven. There's another big bank called VTB, and they're well along in, in ruble usage. And, you know, this, this is going to be like three big Russian banks that work together to do full convertibility of the ruble, which is not new. They've had convertibility. It's going to be fuller convertibility. And at the same time, don't look too hard, but the Chinese are going to be doing the same thing. Now, back to the double eagle again, the Project Double Eagle. 
Um, they're going to demand gold payments for oil and gas exports to the West. Now, this is a direct response to a, an, an action, very dumb action, desperate action by J.P. Morgan to block bank transactions with Russian embassies. And in one particular instance, it's the Sogaz Insurance Group and in Kazakhstan. So that's where the U.S. decided to take a shot. And, and the response is going to be rather universal. And notice that the Russians have not yet said, we're going to reduce your natural gas supply through the pipelines of Ukraine, and we're going to reduce it to German, French, and Italian markets. They haven't done that. Because yeah, they they're haven't. not playing along. Germans are like, eh, 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 mm, mm, no, we don't want sanctions. French, eh, eh, I, no. well, I agree. And, Even and the, the UK. Brits. UK has a gas deal. They're like, uh, they were first to come out and go, uh, no sanctions. Well, there, there's a common theme for the two big countries that have said, no, we're not going to climb on board your sanctions wagon. And that's Germany and London. Uh, you know, Britain, England. Uh, I like calling it London because, uh, you know, that, that's where all the power is. That's where a lot of the population is. But the, the Londoners said, we don't want to jeopardize, jeopardize the Chinese yuan bond trade. So if we start hassling and, and, you know, angering the Russians, we might lose the Chinese clan. Well, that just proves to you that the Russians and Chinese are arm in arm. And furthermore, Frankfurt, this was apart from the Euro Central Bank. The Frankfurt-based uh, Bundesbank said, we want to proceed with the swap facility and make it so that three of our big banks will work closely with three of China's big banks and not settle trade in the dollar. Oh, they don't want to anger Russia. They don't want to piss off China either. So <clears throat> we, soon I expect we're going to see all the BRICS nations. That's Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. I think they're all going to say, we don't want to get... United States real angry, so we're going to play along. And if, if they want to isolate Russia, we'll join them in isolation. There's your critical mass. Yeah, we'll join them not using the dollar. Exactly. We, we'll, we'll just settle you on. Thanks for pointing out. I didn't finish my own, my own point. There's a third bank, Spur Bank, S-B-E-R Bank, and it's kind of the same route as Siberia. Um, the Spur Bank announced that they're going to discontinue all foreign currency-based loans in their European branches. Can you say Russian ruble? This is, you know, they're going to make car loans in, I don't know, Prague. They're going to be rubles. And, and when you've got these two gold-backed currencies in the ruble and yuan, Oh man, all you got to do is just count months before the dollar is dead. And what it's not going to die. I, I, I've been, you know, I'm, I'm a bit dramatic myself. The dollar's not going to die. The dollar is going to undergo a transformation. It, it cannot continue in its present state. What it's going to do is it's going to split. All the international dollars are going to be subject to, you know, leave us the hell alone. They're not going to have the dollar. Uh, bond monetization at the Fed in New York. They're going to be free from those shackles and, and under. It's like it's like blowing a fire hose under your house. Eventually, you lose a pillar and, and your house starts tilting. Well, that's what the Fed does for all these foreign central banks. China is going to be in charge of the international dollar, and the United States is going to have all these challenges, huge challenges to finance their own deficit, the government debt, and and they're, they're not going to have. The, the Fed at the ready. What they're going to have to do is create their own dollar and devaluate it and encourage other nations to purchase some of their debt with, you know, 30% decline in the dollar. Then another 30% months later. I'm thinking a total of 80% devaluation of the domestic dollar. We've covered this before. But, uh, you know, this whole Project Double Eagle by Russia is going to not just be a workaround the Swiss, it's going to be a kicking the swift right in its ass it's, and off the table. It's going to be the new system. It's going to be a new eastern system. 
and, and look for China to give full weight behind it in support. What about Saudi Arabia and uh, their, uh, you know, President Obama made a special trip to fly down when he was over, in, over overseas, made a special trip to Saudi Arabia. This is a country that last year said the Obama administration, quote, stabbed them in the back, end quote, over, over Syria. And now they're talking about, uh, you know, giving these man pads, these shoulder-held uh, missiles to equalize the power between, uh, you know, the Syrian Air Force and, uh, you know, dropping barrel bombs and whatever on the uh, al-Qaeda rebels. I mean, let's just call it what it is. Uh, and so, uh, you know, they're uh, not, they're upset, but it doesn't don't they reach critical mass at some point when they see China and Russia and India? Don't they say, e you know, listen, we just we can't trade oil only a dollar. Sorry. Don't they say that at some point? Uh, Saudi Arabia. I think, I think the Saudis are going to make a business decision. Uh, remember that that 10 days ago or so, Prince Salman met in a very important Beijing conference uh, with President Xi Jinping, President Xi, it's pronounced S-H-E-E, -E, X I is S H E E. Xi. President Xi met with the Saudi economic representative and had all kinds of deals, projects, loan facilities, donations, charity, all kinds of things prepared. Okay, this is how the new protectorate role comes with China flying around and floating around on the seas, sailing around with the, the big Chinese flag waving in the Persian Gulf and big guns on the deck. This is what the Saudis need because after the Americans stabbed the Saudis in the back, the Americans and the British stole their gold in London. And when Obama got a 20-minute welcome and then suddenly the meeting was over, you can only speculate what on earth happened in Riyadh that pissed people off. And I'm thinking the Americans were told that Saudi will continue to work with China and bring about more quiet relations with Iran. You know, you, you don't become friendly with Iran without becoming an enemy of the United States. So Saudi is going to work closely with China and therefore closely with Iran and work toward the petro yuan standard where oil is purchased and sold in yuan terms that's what's coming for the Saudis. And they're probably going to use some kind of a, a chicken lever approach by saying, you want to use euros, you want to use Swiss francs, you want to use pounds, you want to use yen, fine. Rubles, great. You want, fine. You, we're, we welcome them all because we're a global player. We're a global supermarket for oil. But there's something else that the Saudis might have told Obama that angered him and his team. They might have said that we're not going to help you with your London gold shortage and we don't like how you're stealing our gold and they might have told Obama we really don't like your stupid ass Arab Spring and your support in the open of Al Qaeda because these are agencies and institutes and movements and grassroots elements that want to depose the Saudi monarch so what are you doing now, what the United States has done is, in the last few years, in their desperation, they've basically thrown the Saudis under the bus. At the, at the same time, the Saudis are big liars about their oil excess capacity. The excess capacity lies in Russia, in Canada. It does not lie in the Saudi Arabian uh, Peninsula. In fact... Their big Gawar oil field produces 90% water, 10% oil. Let's, let's bring this home uh, and wrap this up back in the U.S. And I, and I don't think we can say enough about this. I mean, you know, do we have oil in the U.S.? Yes. Canada? Yes. Uh, do we have some kind of a future in energy in, in with uh, Alaska? I'm sure we do. But people ask me that, uh, you know, well, is, well aren't we going to just have our own oil and aren't we going to be able to compete with these people? I said, yeah, eventually, but it's not going to stop the collapse, the crash. And I know a lot of people have called me a drama queen for bringing up the collapse scenario, but I don't know how else you can, you can take a look at all the information that people like you put out with the move away from the U.S. dollar, the, the split dollar, the massive devaluation that you're talking about, and not bring up the fact that there's going to be a collapse in standard of living, at the very least, here in the U.S. Can you talk about what it's going to look like here in the U.S. when this thing, when this thing finally takes hold, which you're saying it's a matter of months away 
if you look at the gold back you want and the gold back ruble and all these deals working out, then you say this is a pivotal year 2014. What is it going to look like at the end of 2014, 2015 here in the U.S.? Well, as these events take place, the United States is going to find itself where its treasury bond is no longer of value. And the only way it's going to maintain its market value is by absolute and total corruption of the treasury bond market and unbelievable reliance upon interest rate derivatives and excessive pressure on the Department of Treasury's exchange stabilization fund. In other words, they're going to create a lot of paper, mythical, fictional, phantom demand. And that is going to cause the system to break. I think it's going to cause a derivative breakdown in the United States banking system, primarily with J.P. Morgan and Morgan Stanley. Those two, they're not really, they get Morgan in the name, but I don't know where Morgan Stanley got its name. So when foreign countries realize, well, gee, we're, we're uh, let, let's just say Poland. Well, we don't need to store treasury bonds to buy oil. Uh, how about France? We don't need to store treasury bonds to buy oil from Saudis. They're going to start storing euros and rubles and yuan. So as they begin to realize that their treasury bonds are not going to be all that valuable anymore, and besides their actual trading value is going to be supported by artificial, corrupted American market mechanisms, they're going to start dumping. They've already started dumping. In the month, in the 30 days ending in March 13th, foreign nations dumped $100 billion in treasury bonds. The United States tried to keep that quiet. In fact, if you look at a certain week, you can see, well, gee, they produced a rally. It's because they put on these interest rate derivatives again to create a phony demand and phony rally. So as the United States has all this colossal pressure on its treasury bond, it's going to be like everything that happened three years ago with the pigs nations, Portugal, Italy, Greece, Spain. They all had pressure that was to kill their sovereign bond. The U.S. is going to get the same thing, and their reaction is going to be, all right, all right, all right, we've had enough, we're going to make our own dollar. Uh, the United States is going to have its own domestic dollar, call it the Republic dollar, call it whatever you want. I call it the shit dollar or the shice dollar, whatever. But they're, they're going to talk about how it's going to be oil and gold backed. And it's going to be a bunch of bull crap because their, their gold is the deep storage gold unmined in mountains like, like held in Colorado and Nevada. I mean, that's not gold bullion. That's gold hope. Now, they're going to be backing the new dollar on BS. What does, that look like like to the, what does that look like to the street level? What kind of inflation are, we gonna, are people going to see? What kind of well, disruption is that going to be on the street level here in America? When the, the Treasury bond is under pressure and they have to come up with a new dollar, that what they have to do is finance the U.S. government debt. And, and in order to do that, they need to cheapen the dollar. They, they need foreign suppliers to be willing to take dollars. Well, they don't want the dollar at the current level. It's got to be a cheaper dollar. So the huge challenge, Greg, is going to be, do we make it a 50% dollar devaluation for this new shice dollar? I don't like calling it a republic dollar because the United States is not a republic. It's a fascist dictatorship. If they do a 50% devaluation of this, this shice dollar, what you're going to see is a 100% inflation on imported products. But they're not going to do a 50% devaluation. They're going to do something like a 25, 30, or 35, a gradual kind of thing that will not produce equilibrium, and that is the key. Because they want to do it gradually, the 25 or 30 percent devaluation will have to have another one in four to six months of equal volume, equal size. So in six or eight months, they're likely to have a 60 percent or so devaluation or maybe a 70 percent devaluation. And that's going to cause <clears throat> over a 100 percent increase on anything imported. I'm not talking about Iowa corn. I'm not talking about razor blades made in, uh, you know, a South Carolina plant. I'm talking about imported objects like 
a computer made in Japan or the Pacific Rim. I'm talking about like a disk drive component that you want to replace on a fried computer. All right, I need a new disk drive. I'm talking about a Toyota car. I'm talking about a Hyundai car from Korea. I'm talking about, you know, a German construction equipment piece of machinery. I'm talking about all these imported devices, imported products, finished products, crude products. It could be lumber from, from, from Brazil. It could be, you know, copper from Chile or Bolivia. It's going to cost twice as much. We're, we're going to see basically in, a, in, a, in months a 100% devaluation, 100% inflation roughly. That's what you're on saying, imported, on average. On imported products. Yes. So that'll trickle whatever, down to everything else. I mean, people, whatever, people will go whatever, crazy. Whatever the dollar devaluates, and, you know, it's not exactly, like, I'll give you an example. A 30% dollar devaluation results in a 42% increase in the price of foreign imports. And you, you, you got to, I mean, the reason it's that is because 7 tenths on a 30% devaluation is 10 sevenths. This is well, why. ten sevenths is one and three sevenths, which is one point four two. So a forty-two percent increase on a a thirty percent dollar devaluation. A f just for some simple math, a fifty percent devo dollar devaluation brings about a doubling in the import prices. All right, but the United States imports only half of what it needs. So whatever you get for this foreign import import price inflation, divide it by two. I think we're going to get. An 80% dollar devaluation in about five steps, which will cause, I mean, to just do the math again, 80% is, is one over five for a devaluation. So what's five over one? That's 500. So that's, that's your, your one plus four more. 400% import price inflation is what I'm expecting. I'm not, I don't know when. I'm just saying that, you know, don't, Trap me and say, you know, Jim Willie's calling for a 400% price inflation. I'm saying that eventually to meet equilibrium, the, the new Scheiss dollar, the Republic dollar that comes about, will have to be devaluated by 80%, which is going to result in a tremendous increase in imported prices. And, and there's a good side to this, <laughs> believe it or not. It means that the United States is going to be able to sell machine tools. Because it's going to be cheaper. They're going to be competing against Germans and Japanese that are much more expensive. So it's going to be a reindustrialization of the United States after all the chaos. And if you're wondering what's the chaos going to look like, take a look at Venezuela. They only had a 73% devaluation of their currency. And guess what? They don't, they don't have beans in the store. You know, beans are a staple. Uh, we, we don't have, the United States doesn't have an equivalent. Maybe, But in, in Venezuela, they take their beans and they sell it <laughs> to foreigners to get foreign currency. That's what's coming in the United States. U.S. output is going to be sold to foreigners, and then the local American citizens are going to wonder... How come the supermarket shelves are empty? Why are all the U.S. agri-corps selling to foreign countries? It's because they want to bring in currency, just like Venezuela. This is third world, guys. That's what the new Scheiss dollar is going to introduce to the United States. All this backfire from abuse by the, the, the Federal Reserve, you know, the QE1, QE2, Operation Trust. QE3, taper talk that failed, it's pretty clear. It's QE to infinity, and Janet Yellen is a freaking liar. They're doubling and tripling their volume. What's going to happen to gold? I mean, are, is Wall Street going to take this suppression game and flip it on its back and send it to the moon to gold and silver prices? Is that is that coming? Well, Wall Street's not going to be in charge. It's going to be the owners of gold. Wall Street is, is the seller of gold. Wall Street is the rapist, violator of gold. So are the, are the holders of gold, the foreigners, going to take this thing and say, "Yeah, we want, we're going to we're going to we're going to send this up." We're, they're going to move it. They're going to move it to five and seven thousand dollars an ounce. They're going to move the silver price to two and three and four hundred dollars an ounce. Because all the world's central banks are going to need gold 
they're all going to be selling their treasury bonds to buy gold to make for a solution to their banking systems. Now, what's the missing solution for all these stinking five years since Lehman, five and a half years? What's the missing piece? Solvency. It's solvency and it's, it's legitimate reserves, yes. hard asset gold reserves. So the whole world is going to join this gold standard led by China and Russia. Germany will join, and when they join, it's game over for the United States and the West because Germany already, I heard this, this is yesterday from The Voice. He said, <clears throat> I made a point that the, the, the German bankers are very pro-U.S. and pro-London. New York and London, they play ball. They, you know, they brought in Bankers Trust into go uh, into Deutsche Bank, and all the derivatives have been managed by Deutsche Bank. Well, that's broken now. Deutsche Bank's going to be moved into five or seven different companies. This is going to be just horrible for London and New York. But the point I made was that the bankers are very loyal to New York and London, but the industrialists in, <coughs> in pardon me, the industrialists in Germany are very much eager to play ball with Russia and China. And, and The Voice wrote back and said, I got news for you. 90% of industrial, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> I need a little water. 90% <coughs> of German industrial executives <coughs> in their corporations are pro-Russia. 90%. Yeah, they don't need to be convinced to play ball with Russia. 6,000, uh, uh, just in Germany, 6,000, I, I couldn't believe this, this number, 6,000 uh, uh, German companies are doing business. 6,000 uh, German companies are doing business in Russia right now. And so when I saw that, it was a Reuters story, and I saw that, I thought, sanctions, didn't anybody, didn't anybody in the Obama administration go, hey, you guys going to help us with these sanctions? And they would have gotten no uh, from everybody in the EU. And you're saying that when this thing happens, gold and silver will ricochet up and anybody holding it is going to have an immediate, you know, uh, the opposite, the antithesis of what's going to happen to dollar holders. It's going to it's going to ricochet up. What happens to the banks in the U.S.? Could they have a banking holiday? Are they going to are they going to keep people from saying, whoa, I better start spending my money now. I better get into my bank. Are they going to. Are they going to shut the banks down and have capital controls like, uh, you know, Cyprus and that kind of thing? Oh, absolutely. I, I don't know how many banks in the United States will survive. Uh, they're going to have to recapitalize. Again, the problem for the last five and a half years since Lehman is that these big banks do not have legitimate reserve core. Well, they're going to start acquiring it, using their treasury bonds to buy gold. They're going to use their euro bonds to buy gold. They're going to be using their British gilt bonds to buy gold. They're going to be using their Japanese government bonds to buy gold. When is this going to happen? When is the, when is the big ricochet I don't up? Know, but, well, we're starting to see, you know, when you talk about Project Double Eagle and, and uh, the con fully convertible Chinese yuan, that's not two years away, but it, it's two months away in the Shanghai Free Trade Zone. It's already been announced, not in the U.S. press, don't want to announce that there's going to be a fully convertible yuan. No, we're going to start to see soon some very important but interesting rumbles, like the Persian Gulf nations. You know, they got a what they call a Gulf Co-op. Gulf Co-op. Uh, it's a group of about six nations. It's not all the nations, but it's Saudi Arabia and Bahrain and Kuwait and a few others. I think they're going to come up with a gold back. Gulf dinar. If the Russians come up with one and the Chinese come out with one, a currency, gold back, then the countries that don't come out with one are going to slip into the third world. So the Gulf nations of the Persian Gulf, the Saudis, I think they come up with a, uh, a Gulf dinar. And I think Germany, Austria, Finland, and Netherlands, that four, will come up with a gold back Nordic euro. It, it gets better. Latin American countries are already unifying to make it what they call a regional currency. If you talk about a regional currency, you, you get you raise the anger of the the U.S. government. You start getting attacks. You start getting earthquakes. You start getting uh, banks that that don't have any money in them anymore from hacking. So they call it a regional currency. Well, I've got a source that tells me that Panama has got a huge amount of gold. 
that uh, on a per capita basis is four times as much as Fort Knox had. And furthermore, Panama has something like 30 billion pounds of copper. So Panama is going to have a gold and copper backed currency. It gets better. I think we're going to start here and even Norway will have a gold backed crown. So this is all coming and it's going to be a parade. Hey, let's make our own. Then you're going to start seeing the African nations. Now, what's the hint behind uh, an asset-backed currency? It doesn't have to be gold. I think that the Norwegian krone is going to be oil-backed. But they can quickly convert oil to gold because oil is black gold. These African countries that are gigantic, the Congo is as big as all of Western Europe. The Congo and, and several other countries in Africa, you're going to get like a regional South African uh, asset-backed currency. You're going to get Nigeria and, and its neighbors joining together, whose nations together are larger than Western Europe. <clears throat> Just add them all up together, join them together. They're loaded with resources. They can make their own asset-backed currency. They don't need the dollar. And all this, you think, is that the, the, this year, 2014, is going to be a pivotal year. You started out the interview by saying, you know, 2014 will not end and have any uh, uh, resemblance of what it started out looking like. At the end, will look completely different. I think uh, I, I don't want to put a date on, on when things are completed, but I think you're going to see by the end of this year that the dollar is mortally wounded. And the Treasury bond is regarded as toxic paper. We will leave it at that. Dr. Jim Willey, uh, you uh, are the editor of the Hat Trick Letter, which can be found on goldenjackass.com. That's the, the billboard's been up the whole time here. Uh, Dr. Jim Willey, thank you so much for uh, giving us the update on what's going on with the dollar, with gold, with uh, the uh, Russians, the Chinese, the U.S. Thank you so much, Dr. Jim Willey, for joining us today on USA Watchdog. Oh, my pleasure, Greg. Thanks a lot.